Episodes of Pellet Swap are suggested by viewers like you. If there's a character you'd like me to analyze, let me know in the comment section down below. Good morrow everyone, Silvershire here, and welcome back to Pellet Swap, where I rank the costumes and character designs of your favorite fighting games. By your favorite fighting games, I mean my favorite fighting games, and by my favorite fighting games, I mean Soul Calibur. Today, we're looking at a couple of Soul Calibur 3 newcomers whose names I pronounced wrong for most of my life. First up is Setsuka, or Setsuka, and after that is Zaslamel, or Zaslamel. Timestamp is on screen if you want to skip to him. But before we begin our analysis, here's a quick refresher course on who Setsuka is and what we should be looking for in our character designs. Setsuka was born to a Japanese father and a Portuguese mother on board a ship headed to Japan. Unfortunately, her parents did not survive the voyage, leaving her stranded in a land where she was shunned for her European features. She was eventually adopted by the master swordsman Shugen Kokonoe, who knew what it was like to be an outcast. He was the only person who had ever shown her kindness, and she soon came to love him. Like a father, right? Like a father, right? Well, let's not bother unpacking that, because it wasn't long before he was killed by the wandering ronin Heishiro Mitsurugi. This was no cold-blooded murder, but an honorable duel that Shugen had willingly accepted, and even with his dying breath, he urged Setsuka not to pursue revenge. However, she couldn't help but be filled with hatred towards Mitsurugi, and now she will stop at nothing to strike him down. Setsuka's Soul Calibur 3 1 is inspired by geisha and oiran fashion, which are known for elaborate hairdos and colorful clothing. It makes her look deceptively non-threatening, which mirrors her weapon of choice, a sword concealed by an innocuous parasol. Her kimono communicates her mixed heritage, as it features griffins in a European floral pattern. Another neat detail is that it's trimmed with the same triangles that appear on the central ring of her parasol. Her hair, bow, and gloves are shaped like hearts, which according to an artist's note was inspired by the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. It also ties into the theme of love, which is her primary motivation. She has a triadic red, yellow, and blue color scheme, with a light pastel palette for most of her kimono and deeper shades of those same colors for the details. This helps her parasol stand out, as it's the only large area that uses a saturated red. 8 out of 10. While I'm thinking of it, shout out to Mortar Jean from the Soul Calibur wiki for updating everyone's galleries with HD turnarounds. They are super helpful. Her 2P is more of a warrior look. She's wearing a sleeveless haori and a pair of hakama, both of which are samurai attire, as well as some armored bracers. Her clothes feature a beautiful purple gradient and are adorned with images of mountains and flowers, balancing out the toughness. If you watched my Yoshimitsu episode back in the day, you'll recognize her belt buckle as a Hanya mask, which is perfect for Setsuka since it's used in Japanese no theater to represent a character becoming vengeful. There's no European influence on this design, although her hair is its natural blonde instead of being dyed black. I would have liked some more armor to go with her bracers, but still a 7 out of 10. Her Soul Calibur 4 1P is mainly based on rolled 2P, featuring the same hair and similar gloves. She's wearing a kimono like rolled 1P, but with one sleeve removed, mimicking the typical Ronin style. The griffin and heart motifs are no more, replaced by cherry blossoms, which is apt since her name means snow flower. This theme is woven into just about every part of her design. She has flowers on her parasol, flowers on her kimono, flowers in her hair, and even a couple of flower tattoos. Speaking of tattoos, she also has a kitsune, or nine-tailed fox, on her shoulder. In Japanese mythology, kitsune are shape-shifting spirits who often take the form of beautiful women, which is another parallel to her disguised weapon. Overall, this outfit is fine, but without the geisha aesthetic, it's not nearly as unique as her previous 1P. 6 out of 10. Her 2P is Man poppin', y'all! It resembles upper-class British fashion from the late Victorian or maybe even Edwardian era, which is anachronistic to be sure, but old-timey enough that it doesn't seem out of place. This was a smart choice for a 2P, both because of Setsuka's European background and because it works well with a parasol. The feather in her hat, white gloves, and abundance of frills and ruffles grant her an air of wealth and refinement, and the mostly blue palette does a good job of contrasting her One Piece warmer hues. My problem with this costume is that it really looks nothing like Setsuka. She doesn't have any defining physical characteristics. When you dress her up like a fancy English woman and change both the color and style of her hair, there's nothing to latch onto. Since her Japanese costumes often have a dash of European, it would make sense for this costume to have a dash of Japanese. Maybe replace the hat with the hair of her classic One Piece and add a cherry blossom pattern to her skirt. I don't know if that would look good, but at least it would be recognizable and communicate her mixed heritage. 5 out of 10. In Soul Calibur 6, Setsuka finally learned how to keep her dress from falling off. Her outfit is much more complex than ever before, now including tall gloves and stockings with ornate patterns, ropes tied around her hips and thighs, and most importantly, a kimono hanging from her neck like a cape. As well as looking awesome, this is an example of visual storytelling, because it's actually Shugen's kimono which she's wearing to remember him by. She still has a flower motif, but there are also snowflakes on her dress, so now both halves of her name are represented. 
Her hair this time around is mostly blonde with a few dark streaks, implying that she had been dyeing it but gave up on doing so. Her color palette is way less saturated than in previous entries, which suits the bleaker tone of her story in this game, although I would prefer something more vibrant. Other than that, my only complaint is that it's a little too busy. There would be a lot going on here even without the cape and all the ropes. 9 out of 10. Soul Calibur 6 doesn't have any alternate costumes, but it does have alternate colors, and like Wong, Setsuka's are a bit more complex than those of most other characters. Her color 2 is the only straight-up palette swap, being pink and red with dark hair. I like the callback to Soul Calibur 3, but the lack of two-toned hair is less interesting, and the snowflakes don't look great against a pink background. 8 out of 10. Her color 3 is blue and white, also with dark hair, but blonde highlights as well. Additionally, it lets her hair down and removes her cape, which makes it more unique and solves some of that busyness. The deep blue and stark white make for a striking palette that serves the snow theme well. 10 out of 10. Lastly, her color 4 is black, with white hair, yellow eyes, and tan skin. It too lets her hair down and removes her cape, and it also removes her dress, revealing an undersuit that's usually only visible if her equipment gets destroyed. This alt is supposedly based on her student, Alpha Patroclus, although the inspiration is pretty loose. She would actually look more like him with her default hair, eye, and skin color. However, I'm not complaining, because it looks awesome. This is by far the most distinct alternate color in the entire game, and could pass as a bespoke 2P. The designers made the most of the limitations that were thrust upon them. 10 out of 10. Sosalamel belonged to an ancient clan that was tasked with defending the Holy Sword, Soul Calibur. He was a gifted warrior and an even more gifted wizard, but he was also stubborn and arrogant. He defied the clan's most sacred rule by trying to wield Soul Calibur himself, and for this, his arms were broken and he was exiled. Refusing to succumb to this fate, he sought out the secret to immortality, which was actually super easy, barely an inconvenience. He cast a spell that made his soul unbreakable, so when he died, he would be reborn in a new body. It was an indescribably painful process, but it was worth it. At least, that's what he thought at first. After countless lifetimes, he grew weary of his existence, but there was no way to break the spell. In desperation, he orchestrated a clash between Soul Calibur and the Cursed Sword, Soul Edge, believing their combined power could end him once and for all. Instead, they just turned him into a horrible bone monster. But once he was done being a horrible bone monster, he realized the error of his ways. Over the millennia, he had learned more than anyone could hope to in a single lifetime. So by sharing this knowledge, he could guide humanity towards a brighter tomorrow. Sasalamel's Soul Calibur 3 1 P is a slightly grounded take on the classic fantasy sorcerer, combining cloth and armor to give him a tough yet mystical appearance. His hood and cowl call to mind the Grim Reaper, as befits a scythe wielder, but since this is the only part of his design that does so, it avoids falling into cliched territory. There are several details that reflect aspects of his lore, like a stylized infinity symbol that represents eternal life and a pouch that may contain magical supplies. His palette is mostly white, which is unique for a villain, especially in the Soul Calibur series. But the best part of Zoslamel's design has nothing to do with his clothes. His right eye, which is gold and surrounded by a tribal tattoo, is a unique trait that remains consistent across all his appearances, and it helps keep him recognizable regardless of what he's wearing. It also gives the artists an excuse to have something gleaming from within the darkness of his hood, which always looks great. 9 out of 10. His 2P draws on African aesthetics, which is an untapped well in the Soul Calibur series. It's a relatively simple outfit, but there are lots of patterns and symbols to keep it interesting. His color palette is basically the same as his 1P, but with everything shifted towards yellow or orange. But it doesn't seem like it should be a substantial change, but it gives him a very different vibe. It's not as cold and clinical. It also helps draw attention to the splash of cyan on his chest. 7 out of 10. Before we move on to the next game, let's look at the aforementioned horrible bone monster. Abyss is super creepy, due in large part to his unsettling double mouth. His bones mimic the shape of clothes and armor, including a crown on his head, and he still has a gold right eye, a reminder of the human he used to be. He takes after the series' previous final boss, Inferno, with a skeletal appearance and a mostly red palette. While this helps him fit in, it leads to one of my major criticisms. Abyss was created by merging the powers of Soul Calibur and Soul Edge, yet he only resembles the latter. It would have been neat if, in addition to all the sinew and bone, his design incorporated blue crystals or something like that. At the very least, he could have had a blue orb like in his official artwork instead of a pink one. 8 out of 10. Abyss's 2P is a palette swap that changes the pink to blue and makes the brown more yellow. This represents the Soul Calibur side a bit better, but it loses out on some of that organic ickiness. Also an 8 out of 10. Zoslamel's Soul Calibur 4 1P is a way fancier version of his old 2P. It's adorned with gold decorations and jewels, which gives him a larger-than-life presence fitting for an immortal wizard. However, like many of this game's designs, it's very bulky and overcomplicated. I don't have a lot to say about this costume. It's not awful, but I've never been a fan. 5 out of 10. His 2P, meanwhile, is a way edgier version of his old 1P. It's covered in spikes, blades, chains, and whatever these weird alien skull things on his shoulders are, and it's almost entirely dark grey. This is simultaneously more cluttered and more generic than the last game, as all his unique symbols have been replaced by random evil stuff. 
It's also strange from a lore perspective, because he's not a villain anymore. This looks like the kind of guy who would turn himself into Abyss, not the kind of guy trying to guide humanity towards a brighter tomorrow. 4 out of 10. His Soul Calibur 6 design is based mainly on his Soul Calibur 3 1P, but it weaves in some of the metal decorations from his Soul Calibur 4 1P. This is his only 1P with a cape, and I think it's a great addition. Like the last game, it gives him a larger-than-life presence, but it's not as bulky or distracting. What I don't think are great additions are these huge pauldrons. The crescent shape is a cool idea that matches his scythe, but they're just so big, and they don't appear to be attached to his body very well. They also have a tendency to awkwardly cover up his face. As for his color palette, it's alright, but it's plainer than his previous One Piece, as there are no green accents, it's just white and gold. 6 out of 10. His color 2 is black and silver. I like how much value contrast there is, and the dark blue on the inside of his cape helps break up the monochromatic palette. 7 out of 10. His color 3 is red and brown, which may be a subtle nod to Abyss, and partial red costumes, but even setting that aside, the sinister palette suits him well. 7 out of 10. Lastly, his color 4 is tan and green. It also removes his hood and pauldrons, a reference to his Soul Calibur 3 2P. This is his most unique and varied palette, though I'm not a fan of the dark orangey color they chose for the metal. I think it would look better in lighter gold. 6 out of 10. And with that, we have ranked every single Setsuka and Zasla Mal costume. They both had great starts in Soul Calibur 3, and while Setsuka maintained that level of quality in future games, Zasla Mal has ironically not stood the test of time. Well, that's just my opinion, so what do you think? Let me know in the comments section down below if you agree or disagree with any of my rankings. Also, let me know which character you'd like to see next. For episode 26, we'll be discussing the Tekken version of Yoshimitsu, as requested by Jacobus. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, I bid thee farewell.